and it went terribly. I got mood off the stage. I, <laughs> I got mood off the stage. I got mood off the stage. Everybody. I got mood off the stage. Oh my gosh. I like this. <laughs> I think it was pretty silly. Okay, Tate, everybody watch. See if I can make Tate laugh. Are you ready, Tate? You know that actors and actresses use makeup when they're on stage a lot of times, right? And they have to put, they put rouge on their faces and lipstick and sometimes they, they do something with their eyebrows. Well, I t one day I told one of my actors that they were drawing their eyebrows too high. Well, he looked surprised. You know, <laughs> Delaney, do you know what it means? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Can you just laugh to make me feel better? I knew where this was going. Why is a piano so hard to open? I'll tell you why. Because the keys are on the inside. The keys are on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. Like, oh, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> no. Once upon a time, there was a normal girl who lived in the city. And like all normal girls, she was obsessed with beavers. And one day when she was playing with her 20 pet beavers, she made a startling discovery. She turned into a beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone! Today we have a very special guest, an alien from another planet. Please, tell us your name. His name's George. He and you're in ten seconds you're gonna get so angry. Are you ready? You have a neutral face, nothing's on your face. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, ho, ho, that was okay. The judges were all staring at her. The music started to play. She opened her mouth, but nothing came out. In those few seconds of silence, she felt something on her side. The switch! The switch! The switch was on mute! She quickly turned it off mute, and her voice began singing again. Once upon a time, there was a sneaker ball that could tell you if your shoe smelled fine or not. But it got a cold and couldn't smell anything. It was a miserable week of being sick. It still tried to do its job, but it messed it all up. All the okay-smelling shoes, he went in and made them smell way too overpowered. All the bad-smelling shoes, he avoided, and they just smelled bad. Everyone around me got so disgusted by my smell. Then a couple days later, the cold got better. The sneaker balls... The sneaker ball and my life got on track. One day, a boy was playing with Legos, and the Lego figure came to life. She said, where am I? Ah! The boy pulled her head off and put on a different one. The Lego figure became a different person. The boy figured out that the Lego figure was alive, and they became friends. Yes, that's
That's right, a book quit its story. Now, Hunger Game had been sick of her story for a while because she couldn't go two pages without hearing about Gloom and Doom. However, it was in her book line to be a Hunger Games book. Her parents were even the rough drafts. So one night, when Hunger Game was with her sister Catching Fire, Mocking Jay, her new baby brother Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and her mom and dad. Also, they're good friends, the Harry Potter family. She decided to tell them she was taking a break. Let's just say it got personal. The next day, Hunger Game decided to go out and look for a new story. That's when she saw them, all the books with no story, and realized just how lucky she was to have a story. She decided to go to her parents and tell her just how much she wanted her story back. Her parents were thrilled. So they all decided to get to work until finally, Hunger Game had her story back. This is a box of rocks, and these rocks assemble the form of a human person, and this is their story. You see that man? He may look like a normal man, but he is not. He is a bunch of rocks. They're controlling the clothes from the inside. Sure, whatever, Kevin, Kevin's co-worker said. I don't understand what your problem with Jeff is. He is a bunch of floating rocks. But no one believed him. I mean, who would? Just listen to his claim. But Kevin knew. Kevin had seen Jeff without his hat, and Kevin had to prove it. Now was the time. Kevin's co-worker was walking down the hall, and Jeff was walking down the other side of the hall. He would steal Jeff's hat and prove he was rocks. Kevin snatched Jeff's hat, revealing the floating rocks he was made of. But just as Kevin's co-workers passed, a piece of the ceiling collapsed onto Jeff's head, and no one could tell that he wasn't wearing his hat. Kevin clenched his fists as Jeff passed his co-workers without any problems. I'll get you for this, Jeff. The end. Once upon a time, there was a popsicle and a popsicle stick. The popsicle made fun of all the other popsicle sticks because they were plain and boring. And he was bright and beautiful. Now, one hot summer day, when they all went outside to enjoy the brilliance of the summer warmth, the popsicles started to melt and melt and melt. And by the time he had fully melted, and washed off, he realized he was just like all the other popsicle sticks. And he decided that he would not bully anyone else again. The end. Sometimes it can be difficult and dangerous to find food. My name is Pepper. I am hungry. On Tuesday, I set out on my quest to find food. I like exploring the forest while I am on my quests, so I took a detour. A few hours later, I realized that my detour had gotten me lost. But I said to myself, Pepper, just keep walking. Eventually, I came across a girl that looked like she was eating a raspberry, so I approached her cautiously and used my saddest eyes. Hello, can I have a raspberry too? She said, of course, here you go. Thank you, I said. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who had a speaker. As you may know, most speakers like their jobs of playing music, but this one didn't. One day, when the speaker was sitting on the shelf, the little girl's older brother walked in and asked if she wanted to play a game, and she said yes. The speaker wanted to play too, so it followed them. But they were walking too fast, and the speaker got lost. It kept wandering and wandering. Not long later, it finally found them. And ever since that day, the speaker has lived happily, playing and playing and playing. It once was a board in an attic, but it wanted to escape because it never got used. One day, the person in the house brought up an old vase and set it next to the board. As soon as the person went down, a genie came out. It saw the board and could read minds. It knew that the board wanted to be alive and grow legs. The genie snapped his fingers. Suddenly, the board was alive, and it grew one long leg and two big feet. 
It walked downstairs, went outside, and saw that the neighbors were having a yard sale. Someone asked to buy the board. The neighbor said, yes, it's free. So the board got to spend the rest of its life as a table. Shoot. Oh. Oh no. Can you uh No here, use this. Come on. I told you to be careful. I was it, it just happened. There, let me see. Oh, where are you going? For help. And leave me here? You can't just leave me here. You stay. I'm going off for help. No, no, please. One more. Try. Try again. Stay here. I'll be right back. Uh, hi. Hello. How's everything? Fine, I guess. Do you know what time it is? No, not exactly. Don't you have a watch? Not on me. Well... Well what? What did you do last night? What do you mean? What did you do last night? Nothing. Nothing? I said nothing. Sorry I asked. That's all right. Well? How are you? I'm not all that well, really. Why? What's the matter? The usual things. How are you? I'm fine. Mm. It's been a long time. Yeah, I thought of you the other day. Why? It's nice sometimes to think back, isn't it? Absolutely. How's everything? Oh, not bad. Do you know how long it's been since we met? Uh... Two years. Long time. What are you doing? Can't you tell? Well, I think so, but... It should be obvious. You should. I know. I mean, I really wish you wouldn't. You should have thought of that. It's just because of what I did. Partly, yes, but mostly no. Did I make it up to you somehow? I very much doubt it. Stop doing that and really listen to me. You don't recognize no, do you? I just asked you to listen. I said no. That's it. This is the worst. Mm -hmm. I know. There. Happy? I am now, yes. Good. Are, are you done? Okay. Now your turn. Okay. Uh, no, this is the, this is, this is the worst. Mmm, I know. Th th there. Are you done? Yes, yes. Good. I thought you said you were done. Okay, 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 uh, now. Uh, anything else? Yes, there! This is the story of the penguin and her beloved book. There once was a penguin who walked through the land with her favorite book. The penguin loved her book, and you could often hear her singing, I love this book so much, I could read it all day. I love this book so much, I could read it all day. And so Penguin read the book while walking. It wasn't too long until she looked up and noticed she was in the desert. Penguin was so surprised and exclaimed in a concerned voice, How did I get here? This isn't my home. How did I get here? This isn't my home. Along came Camel, who was very confused when she saw Penguin in the desert. 
She looked once, she looked twice, she rubbed her eyes. And then Camel questioned Penguin. You must not be from around here. You're sweating like crazy. You must not be from around here. You're sweating like crazy. Penguin began to cry as she sobbed. I don't belong in the desert. I need the cold. Can you help me? I don't me? belong in the desert. I need the cold. Can you help me? Can you help me? Camel was quite sympathetic. The book Penguin was carrying looked very interesting. So she nodded her head and kindly replied, Of course, I know a lake where you can cool off. Of course, I know a lake where you can cool off. I'll help you as long as you let me read your book. I'll help you as long as you help let me read your book. Penguin was so happy and she excitedly proclaimed, Sure, I'd love a reading buddy. Sure, I love a reading buddy. And so, Camel led Penguin to a nearby lake. Camel jumped into the lake. And then Penguin, after carefully laying down the book on the beach, jumped in to join her. Their jumping made the, made the waves shoot pretty high. So high that they didn't notice a stealthy tiger come onto the beach. Suddenly, Tiger stole the book while they weren't looking. Camel looked up just in time and shouted, Hey, that's not your book. Give it hey, back. That's not your book. Give it back. Give it back. Tiger was not about to give the book back. He held the book high above his head and taunted the camel. Only if you catch me, good luck. Only if you catch me, good luck. Penguin began to cry. How could her beloved book be gone? Camel was determined to help the poor penguin, and with a very determined and brave voice, Camel said, I know just what to do to get your book back. I know just what to do to get your book back. All we have to do is find some of my friends who can help us get to the jungle. All we need to do is find some of my friends who can help us get to the jungle. And so they began their long journey. They walked and walked and walked. Penguin wiped her brow once. And then she wiped her brow twice. Even Camel was getting hot and started wiping the sweat off her face. Suddenly, oh no, as they were walking through the desert, Penguin accidentally stepped on a snake. The snake hissed, hey, watch where you're stepping. Hey, watch where you're stepping. Not wanting to upset anyone, Penguin quickly apologized in a very kind voice. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. The camel was overjoyed. Snake was here, her friend. Happily, she said, you were just the snake I was looking for. You were just the snake I was looking for. Snake really liked the camel and gave her the biggest smile. And then Snake said to Camel, Hello, Camel. What can I do for you? Hello, Camel. What can I do for you? Now Penguin and Camel started excitedly explaining to Snake. Penguin said, We need to find my book. Tiger stole it from me. We need to find my book. Tiger stole it from me. And Camel said, you know how to get to the jungle from here. Can you help us get there? You know how to get from the jungle. You know how to get to the jungle. Can you help us get there? Snake was very confident that she could help. And she also wanted to know why the book was so important. So Snake hissed, I guess I can take you as long as you let me read your book. I guess I can take you as long as you re let me read your book. And so the group began to walk towards the jungle. And they walked and walked and walked. Eventually, they got to the edge. But right as they entered the trees, two monkeys jumped out at them. And the trio screamed, ah! Ah! 
Camel and Penguin were shaking, as Camel said in a trembling voice, Who are they? Who are they? Snake knew the two little monkeys. They were the twin monkeys known as Oranga and Tang. Snake said, They know this jungle as well as they know what bananas look like. They know this jungle as long as they know what bananas look like. Orango was the bolder of the two and bravely said, Yeah, my sister and I can help you find your book. Yeah, my sister and I can help you find your book. And Tang, his always, always hungry sister, jumped into the conversation with her squeaky little voice. You can pay us back with tons of bananas. You can pay us back with tons of bananas. Penguin was a bit worried. She looked up. And she looked down, but there were no bananas. So then she looked left and then right, but there were still no bananas. Suddenly she exploded saying, how about I read you a story when we're done? How about I read you a story when we're done? Thank goodness that sounded good to Oranga and his sister Tang. And they both retorted, ooh, 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 yes, please. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, yes please. please. So the big group began their journey and moved deeper into the jungle. They climbed over rocks, bravely pushed through bushes, and swam across rivers. When suddenly, oh no, now at this point, everyone stopped and barely breathed. They were all scared to death and with good reason. Why? Well, they could see Tiger's Den on the side of a cave. The monkey twins would go no further. Tang spoke up first and in a very timid voice said, Tiger is too scary. Tiger is too scary. Even though Oranga tried to be tough, he absolutely agreed with his sister. And his voice quivered as he said, Yeah, he stole a bunch of our bananas last week and ate them right in front of us. Yeah, he stole a bunch of our banana loaf so he can eat them right in front of us. Suddenly, Tiger jumped out of the cave and roared, So, you're scared of me, huh? Oh, you're scared of me, huh? Those bananas were just sitting out there, begging for me to take them. Those bananas were just sitting out there, begging me to take them. Tang was indignant as she scolded Tiger. You still can't just take things that aren't yours to begin with. You still can't take things that you're... You still can't just take things that aren't yours to begin with. You still can't take things that you're... aren't be... That aren't yours begin to begin with. That aren't yours to begin with. And Oranga also scolded Tiger. You could have asked first. You could have asked first. That stopped Tiger. Now he was confused and quietly asked, really, is it that simple? That can't be right. Really, is it that simple? That can't be right. Penguin joined into the conversation and said, if you would just ask to read my book, I would have let you borrow it. If you would just ask to read my book, then I'll let you borrow it. Now, Penguin didn't know she believed what Tiger said next. Tiger said, that was your book? It was at the edge of the lake in the desert when I passed by. That was your book? It was at the edge of, it was in the desert at the edge of the lake when I passed by. Camel quickly explained, very matter of factly, we didn't want to get it wet while we cooled off in the water. Didn't you see us? Didn't you see us? Tiger explained that he was so busy looking at the colorful cover because it reminded him of his own stripes. He didn't take the time to read the title. Penguin quickly said, Well, if you read the title, maybe you wouldn't have taken it.
Well, if you read the title, maybe you hadn't had stuff in it. Tiger simply asked, what did it say? Did it say? Penguin kindly stated that the title of her book was The Unlikely Friendship of Ice and Fire. And then she added that tiger stripes are almost exactly like the cover of the book. She then further informed Tiger that she lives in the ice with the other penguins. Tiger was amazed and said, wow, I really wasn't paying attention. That book reminds me of us. Wow, I really wasn't paying attention. That book reminds us of us. And Penguin smiled and told Tiger he was right. The story was like them. And to celebrate their new friendship, Penguin offered to read the book to Tiger as well as to the rest of the group. The group started walking and slithering back to Penguin's igloo. Once they got there, they all snuggled up in some blankets while Penguin read the story and everyone munched on orangas and Tang's bananas. They sat together happily as Penguin read the book. The end. And the end. end. The end. Let me cut the recording. Work.